Good afternoon, everyone. Let's get started. Today, we are going to talk about binary search. Uh, first, course logistics. Homework four was due today, and homework five was out today. And regarding midterm, uh, the schedule is fixed. It's going to be on April 18th from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. And we have two rooms. The first room is um, G's College Building C, N6, room 104 and 109. And when you go to the course website, you can check your seat position because we do not have enough uh, seats. Um, you are going to take the seat assigned. So you can click this link and check where you need to go. So you need to check the room number and the seat number as well. So you need to see where you are assigned, okay? And the coverage is from Python Primer to today's lecture, which is going to be about binary search. And you can refer to lecture slides, code, and homework problems. And there are going to be three types of problems for midterms. And I'm planning to make seven to 10 problems. The first type of problem is WWPP and PPP exercises and short answer questions. And it's going to be closed book, closed laptop. So you need to bring your pen and eraser. And also you need to bring your student ID card because you need to see it at the assigned state position. And regarding midterm review, uh, next class, uh, April 11th, uh, we are going to have a midterm review. However, it's going to be something like any session. It is an optional and face-to-face -face lecture. And you can choose to attend the class or not. It is up to you. And I'll ask the questions in Korean regarding lecture materials. And I'll answer in Korean first and then translate that into English. And regarding homework problems, you can attend TA office hours and ask TAs how to solve those problems. And there was one question, uh, recitation is not going to be the coverage of midterm. So I will not refer to uh, recitation materials to make homework um, the midterm problems. However, there might be some match uh, by coincidence. However, I'm not going to have a look at recitation materials to make midterm problems. Any other questions regarding midterm? Okay, let's move on. And I told you that after midterm from April, April 25th to May 4th, uh, I'm going to just upload lecture videos and it's going to be something like, I showed you this before, uh, something like this, this Google Colab. So it's going to contain both lecture videos and some materials like this lecture material. And I'm going to upload two types of lecture materials, the English version and Korean version. And after watching these videos, you can solve the PPP exercises on your pace because some students need more time to solve those PPP exercises. So you can just drag down and solve PPP exercises and watch another lecture video and do another PPP exercises like this. And you just need to submit uh, your lecture slides or lecture collab. And you can ask questions. Um, You can ask questions online. You can leave comments below each video because it's going to be YouTube videos. And on Thursday, we are going to have um, a Q&A session, face-to-face -face Q&A session. And because it's going to be totally lecture, uh, online lecture, and now attendance matters, submit a copy of your work as a link. And after two weeks of trial, I'll do a survey to check which one is more effective the current online, v online live lecture or the new format. 
And if you have any ideas to improve the effectiveness of lectures, don't hesitate to contact me. And regarding homework, some students are keep asking me to let them uh, submit their homeworks after the due. However, I told you that it is violation of Kim Yong Nam Bob. So if you ask me to um, submit your homework after the due, I'm planning to downgrade your grade. So don't ask that to me, all right? So don't do that. So after this class, if you ask to let you solve me homework problems after due, I'll down, downgrade, all right? So don't ask me such things. And today, uh, so regarding uh, course logistics, are there any questions? Uh, regarding midterm problem types, you can refer to last year's midterm problems. And you don't have to memorize all the things. Uh, if you just need to refer to some material, if you need to refer to some materials to solve midterm problems, I'll give you the sources. However, basically you don't have to, mem I'm not sure, you don't have to memorize things, but you just need to be able to solve homework problems and the materials we discussed during lectures. Any other questions? Okay, let's move on. Um, so I'm going to uh, let you know this in Korean to make it clear. 어, 숙제를 주 지나고 제출하게 해달라고 하는 학생들이 좀 있는데요. 어, 주 지나고는 제출하면 당연히 안 되는 거고요. 저한테 따로 메일 보내서 그런 걸 요청한 경우에는 이게 뭐 저번에도 여러 번 말씀드렸지만 김영남법 위반입니다. 그래서 앞으로 숙제를 주 지나고 저한테 제출하게 해달라고 요청하면 그 학생들은 그레이드를 다운그레이드 하겠습니다. 성적을. 그러니까 주의하시고 숙제 그리고 큰 점수 아니니까 너무 신경 쓰지 않았으면 좋겠습니다. All right. Let's talk about searching. Um, searching is the process of looking up data. For example, we can look up a person in the telephone book. Nowadays, we don't use telephone books anymore. However, um, our cell phones or our, our algorithms should do this. And we also search for the meaning of a word in a dictionary. Nowadays, we don't use a hard copy dictionary, but online dictionaries. And when you do that, computers need to do this searching job for us. So anyway, searching means the process of looking up data. And Python lists have a method called index, which returns the index of the first element that is equal to the given parameter x. So there might be uh, duplicate items of X. However, it re returns the first index of this item. And if the elements of the list are in no known order, then the only thing we can do is using just sequential search, and that is called linear search. So if some information is given about the list, then we can make it more efficient. Otherwise, uh, we can do only linear search. So linear search is quite simple. Um, let's implement this together. So when it comes to linear search, let's say A is given array and X is the item of interest. In this case, how do we find the item X in this array A? We're just going to travel all the way through the items inside array, the given array A. And if this uh, array contains an item, 
equal to x, we are going to return that index. Otherwise, we are going to raise a value error, meaning that this array does not contain the item x. It's quite simple to implement. So that is linear search. So basically, what we do, you just travel all the way from the start to the end and check each item equals to the given item X. In general, the complexity is ON because we need to uh, check all the items. And here N signifies the number of items inside this array. And can you do better? It is often possible to improve this in practice by keeping often needed elements at the front of the list. So we can just keep track of the frequency of looking for some item. And then we are going to put uh, often needed elements at the front of the list. In that case, best, ca best case becomes 01. And we're going to talk about these topics in more detail after midterm. And what about search in sorted cases? If the items inside a list or array is sorted, then we can do much better than just linear search. A given a list A with a non-decreasing sequence of integers, meaning that there might be some duplicate elements, we can stop as soon as we find the item. So this is the code. Uh, let's have a look at this one together. So here, this one was a linear search. And when items are sorted, we can call, we can do something called sorted linear search. So here we are going to receive the same parameters, array and the item of interest we want to find. And what we are going to do is for i in range A. So basically we are going to have a look at all the items from the start to the end and check whether this item at the current position is larger than or equal to X. And if this happens, we are going to return I. Otherwise, we are going to return the length A. So this is how we implement this sorted list. Um, the difference between linear search and sorted linear search is here. If this item becomes larger than X, we are going to just stop because after this item, all the items are going to be larger than X and we don't have to look at those parts. So that is why we stop if we just find an item that is just larger than this item X. Okay. So different from uh, the linear search, we can just stop here. So it's a little better than just linear search. And here you can have a look at this, close look at uh, this part. We are going to return the length of A if we cannot find any uh, item, any index that corresponds to this item X, because um, here, what we are returning is the position where X could be inserted. So if X is larger than all the items inside this array A, then we need to put that item at the end of this array using something like append. So uh, this return I or len A represent the position, the possible or possible position where X can be app appended or inserted. So that is why we are returning I or len A here. And that is basic um, sorted search and just linear search. If you do not know anything about the elements inside this array, then we can do what, what we can do is just linear search. And if items are sorted, then we can just stop when we find an item or some item that is larger than the given item X. So that's the basic or simple uh, sorting 
uh, search algorithms. Then what is a binary search? Today's main topic. Uh, in the case where the data of a list is sorted, we are assuming that data inside the given list is sorted. Then we can do something like this. We compare the item. So there was a question regarding sorted linear search. Uh, if there is no item matches um, X, then we are going to return the length of A. So if there is no item matching X inside array A, we are returning length A, okay? And that could be the position of X, the future position. So in the case where the data of a list is sorted, we compare the item of interest with the middle element. And search in the left half, if the middle item is uh, larger than the item of interest or the right half. And the most and we do this again and again. And the most intuitive implementation of binary search is using recursion. And we are making binary decision in every step. So we just look at the middle element. And if the item of interest is larger than this middle element, we go to the right half. Otherwise, we go to the left half. So we are making binary decision in every step. So let's have a look at uh, what these really are. So in the case of sequential search, we want to look at 37. We start from the uh, beginning and until we find the item of interest, we check each item. However, in the case of binary search, we first go to the middle item. And because the middle one, 23, is larger than, smaller than 37, we are going to go to the right half. So we don't, have, we just remove this part, but we only care about the right half. And the next middle point is going to be 41. And because 41 is larger than 37, we are going to go to the left half. So from ninth to 16th elements, the left half is going to be nine to 11th elements. So we, uh, we repeat doing this, going to right, left, and right to find this item. So it takes only four steps uh, in the case of binary search. However, in the case of sequencer search, it takes 11 steps. So it's much, uh, binary search is much efficient, much more efficient than sequencer search. And binary search in the best case, if you are looking for the item of uh, item 23, then the best case takes only one step when the item of interest is in the mid at the middle. However, um, the sequencer search takes like eight steps. So that is the best case of binary search. In the worst case, when we are looking for item one, then it takes like four steps. However, in the case of sequencer search, it takes only one step. So binary search sometimes could be worse than a sequencer search. However, in general, binary search is much more efficient than sequencer search. Uh, any questions regarding binary search, the concept of binary search? All right, let's implement. Uh, before we start implementing binary search, there is one fun fact about binary search. The binary search was first published in 1946. And the first implementation without bug did not appear until until 1962. So it took about like quite a lot of time for actual implementation of this algorithm. And in an experiment, professional programmers were given ample or enough time to implement binary search. And only 10% of them could get this small program right. So this program is quite small. However, it is quite hard 
implemented without any bug. Okay, let's start implementing uh, our binary search. So this was sorted linear search. We are going to implement binary search. Uh, when we implement binary search, I told you that we are going to use recursion. and binary search. So we are given the same parameters, an array and an element of interest we wanna find. However, uh, I told you that we need to have some boundaries, the left half and right half to decide the left half and right half. So we are going to use a different uh, method to implement this binary search. Uh, Jaeyoung asked that to conduct binary search, uh, should he have sorted list? Yes. If the list is not sorted, then we just need to do linear search. We can do nothing. However, if the items are sorted, if we know that, we can do binary search. Otherwise, we can use binary search. Okay, that was a good question. Uh, the reason why we are um, introducing another find rec function is because we need to define some boundaries. So in the beginning of uh, this binary search, we are going to have a look at, uh, we are going to scrutinize all the items from zeroth index to the last item like this. However, as we move forward, we're going to modulate this range or boundaries to find the item of interest. And once I implement this uh, find rec function, it'll be, it'll be clearer. So here, I is low boundary and J is high boundary. And what we are going to do is, first we need to define the base case. And the base case is when J is smaller than I, then we are going to return I. Otherwise, we are going to find the mid position. We are going to find the mid position using this expression. And as I told you, if the item at the middle position is smaller than X, then we need to go to the right half. So we can express that as find rec. We're going to pass the same array in X. However, uh, the right half is going to be mid plus one and J. So this is going to be right F. Otherwise, we are going to return find the rec a and x i and mid minus one. So this is going to be left half. So this is how we implement binary search. If the item of interest is larger than the mid the middle value, we go to the right half. And to do that, we just pass this mid, mid plus one and J, then we are, we are going to look at the right half. And if this item X is smaller than the middle item, then we need to have a look at the left item. So we're going to the left half by passing I remains the same. However, the mid position is going to be the new high boundary. So this is how we implement binary search. Any questions regarding this implementation?
then we can run this algorithm like this. The position of the three is going to be at the index three. But this is how we implement, implement this binary search and use binary search. Um, okay. However, as I told you, um, that recursion can be sometimes very problematic because it, it entails function calls and it's going to overflow our stack memory sometimes. So sometimes we need rather than iteration. So this is going to be our first PPP exercise of today. Um, try to convert this um, recursive implementation of binary search into binary search iterative. And we are given the same items like this. Uh, try to implement uh, iterative binary search. And before you tackle this problem, please send me a PPP message.
All right, thank you for sharing your answers. Let's do this problem together. Okay, let's do this together. First, we need to see what values we need to change. Uh, here, I and J are changing over time. And the condition of iterating is going to be this one. So we are going to use while um, J. So we are going to use while I is smaller than or equal, equal to J. We're going to do this again and again. Um, but before we do that, we are going to initialize i as zero and j is then a minus one. So this is going to be our initial state. And when this happens, uh, this iteration is over. So we are going to uh, negate this condition that's going to be i smaller than or equal to j. So when this condition is met, we are going to repeat this process again and again. We calculate the mid position as before. And we need to check if A mid is smaller than X, then we are going to change I as mid plus one. Else we are going to change J as mid minus one. And after executing this, until this, this condition is violated, we are going to return i. And another thing you can add here is if the item at the middle equals x, then we can just simply return mid. So you this one makes this implementation a little more faster and efficient. However, even though you don't put this line, this expression, it works okay. Okay. So that was our binary search in an iterative format. And let's compare the performance of these, these algorithms. Uh, you don't have to worry about this uh, test code. Uh, it compares, um, it, all, it first make, I guess something's wrong. I'll just show you the result. So this is uh, the actual comparison of each algorithm. So Python search takes this amount of time, like uh, 15 seconds to find an item. And linear search takes much longer time. And sorted linear search also takes quite a lot of time. However, in the case of binary search, it takes only six microseconds. So as you can see, binary search is way faster than these three algorithms, linear algorithms. And binary search iterative is even faster than the recursive version. And two microseconds are spent for function calls. So as you can see here, if your implementation entails a lot of function calls, you better use iteration rather than recursion. So this is the actual comparison. Uh, so that's all we need to talk about binary search. And from now on, we are going to talk about applications of binary search. And I'm going to give you some PPP uh, exercises uh, regarding applications of binary search. The first PPP exercise is calculating the power of 
x, so x to the power of n, x to the n. So power of two to the 10 is going to be 1024. And power of this number becomes this. And you also need to support negative power. And try to implement this uh, function. However, you better use binary search to make it efficient. So don't make it O n, but make it O log n. And by the way, the time complexity of binary search is O log n, whereas the time complex complexity of linear search is O n. So try to implement this function. And as, as usual, try to uh, send me a PPP message before you try to solve this problem.
I'll give you one more minute. Okay, thank you for sharing your answers. Um, when you first uh, try to solve this problem using binary search, it might be somewhat confusing. However, once you look at the solution, uh, it will be quite straightforward. So let's have a look at this one first uh, together. Um, we first need to check some base cases. The base cases might be when n equals zero, then we're going to return one, whatever the x is. Otherwise, if n becomes one, then we need to return the number itself. And if n is smaller than zero, in this case, the powers are negative. And what we are going to do is return one divided by how x minus n. So this is the definition of negative power. And this minus sign negate this n. And because n was smaller than 0, minus n becomes larger than 0. And another thing we can do is we are going to calculate the power of x and divide by 2. And if n is a even number, then we're going to return dev times dev. Otherwise, you're going to return dev times dev times x. So this is how we implement this PAL function using binary search. So as you can see here, we are dividing this problem into two parts and then use this part to calculate the final answer. So this is quite simple than you expected, right? And I'm going to give you some a similar problem. Uh, so here we want to calculate uh, square root custom. Uh, this function receives a number n and tries to calculate the square root of x. However, it's somewhat different than ordinary square root. Um, in the case of square root of four, it's going to be two. And square root of eight is going to be something two point xx. And here we are going to we are not going to care about the decimal points. So we're going to remove this decimal part and return two. And when it comes to 16, the square root of 16 is four, of course, and the square root of 24 is four point something. And here we're going to remove this decimal point and try to implement this square root custom and the expected time complexity is log, log n or log x and try to implement this function. And before you try to solve this function, please send me a PPP message.
I'll give you one more minute. Hey, thank you for sharing your answers. Let's do this together. Um, this one is from one of students. Um, by defining M1 and M2, and while N times N is smaller than X, uh, if M times M is larger than X, it's going to return N. Otherwise, it's going to increase M1, M plus one. And at the end, return N. Um, this takes time complexity of O N rather than O log N. Because we need to increase N one by one and search all the search space. And the binary version is like this. Now we're going to first define low and high as zero and x. Now here, let's assume that x is always larger than or equal to zero. Uh, in this case, we can do while low is smaller than or equal to high. What we are going to do is find the mid value. However, that value is going to be between the middle point between low and high. So that is going to be low plus high minus low divide by two. And we are going to check whether if this mid time mid is larger than X. If this is the case, we are going to change high as mid minus one. I'll see if, if mid times mid is smaller than X, we're going to change the low value as mid plus one like this. And in other case where this is when mid time mid equals X. In this case, we can just return mid. And after iterating all possible values, we're going to return high. So this is a binary search version of square root custom. So this is very similar to the basic uh, binary search algorithm that looks like this. So you just need to check whether you need to have a look at the right half or the left half after checking this condition. So you do similar thing here. So you check the mid value and if the mid value is um, larger than the given value X, we're going to have a look at the left half and if this value is smaller than X, we're going to have a look at the right half. So regarding this implementation, is there any question? Okay. 
Okay. And the last problem of today is the a tricky part. Uh, here, you are going to um, tackle when these nums These nouns could be rotative. So what does it mean by rotation? Here, um, this number, 0, 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, is in the increasing order. However, um, this one is rotated at this position. So one, two, 0, 1, 2 is at the end. And the left part, four to seven is in the increasing order. However, these values are larger than these values on the right. So the original values were one, two, and four, five, six, seven. However, here, we're rotating this list. So, this, so these values, get rotated and go to the first part and other values on the left goes to the right. So this means these nums could be possibly rotated. So after this uh, rotation part, pivot, everything is as usual, sorted. So after this part, these numbers are in the increasing order and up to this point, these numbers are in the increasing order. So the problem is, given possibly rotated number of lists, try to find the target. And when you first have, uh, when you first encounter this kind of problem, it might be very confusing and you might not come up with any idea. So I'm going to let you know how to solve this problem. Uh, the basic idea is like this. Uh, first, uh, you try to modify the basic binary search algorithm. So let's review what basic binary search algorithm was about. Uh, we first need to come up with some criteria. And according to this criteria, the only thing we need to de determine uh, and using this uh, or these criteria, we just decide where to look at. So between right half or left half. So this was basically what we did. So, in modifying the basic binary search, uh, try to come up with this criteria to so design the criteria to solve this problem. So basically, you can use uh, this binary search code template. However, we are not using this criteria. However, we are using different criteria and we just need to determine whether to look at the right half or to the right, left half. So that's all you need to do. So try to solve this problem, thinking how to design the criteria. Uh, as usual, try to solve this problem and please send me PPP message.
Um, I guess we are running out of time, so I'm going to give you uh, one more hint regarding this problem. Uh, the key idea is to check whether the rotation center, your rotation center is denoted as P, pivot. Uh, you just need to find the criteria to check whether the rotation center is on the right half or on the left half. So if rotation center is on the right half, you may need to come up with different criteria to look at the left half or the right half. Or if the rotation center is on the left half, you need to do something different. So in fact, you need to design two criteria. Uh, the first criteria is to check the position of pivot or rotation center. And the second uh, criteria is to determine where to look at, left or right. So this is another hint. Uh, I guess today we need to call it a day, uh, try to solve it on your own, and then try to check the answer after class. Uh, thank you for your participation. If you have any questions, you can stay here. Otherwise, you can leave now.